Hey guys, ANA here. Flight Deck at California's Great America in Santa Clara, California is one of the best coasters in the state. It has amazing pacing, intense positive Gs, and whippy transitions. I feel it gets too much criticism for its length. To me, there's no denying its short duration, but it still delivers a complete ride packed with strong forces. To start, this Balagere and Mabillard inverted coaster has a long history. It was built in 1993 when the park was still run by Paramount. It was originally named Top Gun and was themed to the respective movie. I would have rather it kept that theme as the generic name Flight Deck is not nearly as cool as Top Gun. It also sported a full black paint job, but I think that the new color scheme is better and pops more. Flight Deck does not have a very prominent effect in the park, but the few elements by the second entrance makes a good first impression for those in the parking lot. Flight Deck's Q actually has some decent theming left over from the Paramount days. It is supposed to look like you are an aircraft carrier, and there might even be some music blasting in the station. On my visit last year, it was fairly crowded, but Flight Deck still had a manageable wait all day. So if you're credit hopping, you can prioritize this last on a busier day. If you want to marathon it though, the crowds won't make it back there until later in the day. On a quieter day, which was my most recent visit, it was a station wait all day, so get your laps in on Railblazer before you head over to Gold Striker, and then Flight Deck. There is usually a grouper that assigns seats, but like at most Cedar Fair parks, if you ask nicely, they will often grant your request, even if it means waiting another cycle. The best row on this coaster depends on what kind of experience you want. The back row delivers a more intense experience, while the front has great visuals and the rush of wind on your face. If you go for the front though, definitely take the leftmost seat, as on that final helix in the end, you get super close to the water. When you board the train, you will find yourself in the familiar B&M invert trains with hard over-the-shoulder restraints. There are some points of headbanging during the ride, so prepare yourself for those. The track work is last smooth, it's just that the whippy transitions can be borderline janky. There is a redundant seatbelt, but it does not affect the ride experience. After your dispatch, you take a slight right turn into the 100 foot or 30 meter tall lift hill. You get a great view of Levi's Stadium in the parking lot, but not for long. When you disengage from the lift, the back row gets whipped down the 91 foot or 27 meter tall drop. You pull a bone crushing 4 G's at the valley and get thrown through the first inversion, a tight vertical loop. It feels similar to the vertical loops on Batman the Ride clones. That subsequent valley pulls another 4 G's, sustaining through an upwards helix. The upper parts of the helix start losing power, around 2 to 3 G's. You then drop down near the ground, getting a little float in the back row. You then hit the whippiest moment of the ride, the zero G roll. This is one of the most intense elements I have ever ridden. It violently rotates your body 360 degrees, with strong positive G's in the prior and subsequent valleys. The best way to describe it is that it feels like it's trying to rip the train off the tracks with you on it. Even though that would never happen, it sure feels like it. Also, expect some head banging here. You then hit the only dull moment on the ride, which is an elevated turn over the station. A part of me wishes they could have added another element here, but I sort of appreciate it as it gives you a break from the onslaught of positive G's that you just experienced. But the whole ride up to this point has been a warm up for the insane finale. It starts with a small drop that gives a little float in the back row. You then traverse the final inversion, an aggressive corkscrew. The pull up into the corkscrew hits around 3.8 Gs, leading into the whippy inversion. The best part about this though, is that similarly to the Hulk at Universal's Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida, the corkscrew doesn't level out at the bottom. It continues to go down into a trench, causing the back row to get pulled by the front rows of the train through the inversion more forcibly than normal. Flight deck dips down to water level, causing the back row to get yanked through the inversion. The exit of the corkscrew has one more trick up its sleeve though. For some reason, the track straightens out just so it can whip you another 90 degrees before crushing you with more positive Gs on the turn over the water. This little touch just adds to the intensity and disorientation factor. Watch out for head banging here though. That subsequent turn was absolutely phenomenal. You violently rotate 90 degrees and sustain a maximum of 4.16 to 3.8 Gs. Not to mention, you are millimeters away from the water. It really feels like you are skimming above the water if you sit in the leftmost side of the train. If you ride at night though, the finale is completely pitch black, making it feel like you are going faster than you already are. You can't even prepare for the transitions either. The helix then leads into an elevated S-bend with one last snap to the brake run, ending the 2,260 feet, or 690 meters of track. In conclusion, manufacturers just don't make coasters like this anymore. Flight deck is janky, but in a whippy way. It tosses you every which way it wants, and nothing will ever compare to its nature. So, if you enjoyed, I would appreciate a like or even a sub, that would be pretty cool. And thanks for making it all the way through the video, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.